Okay, I should probably start this out by saying I'm not an electrician and I don't play one on TV. Uh, so, you know, read the instructions on these things and get an electrician to help you. That's what I did. Um, but I will tell you about my experiences because uh, I learned a lot along the way. A little bit with the first one and then a lot when I put the second one in, which would have changed the way that I did the first one. So, here it goes. Alright, so when I bought my first Tesla kind of on a whim and got it home with really no plan of how to charge this thing, and Tesla's come with a cord, you can plug it in to any type of outlet, but it'll if you're in a regular outlet, it's gonna, you know, unless you can drive for one day and then plug it in for two days, that's not not gonna work for you. Um I have my shop that you guys have seen I make a lot of these videos on. And out there, I wired up a NEMA 1450, which is like a RV style 50 amp plug. And that, that works pretty good. That's a pretty, pretty good charge rate, 30 to 40, probably closer to 40 miles per hour. So it's a pretty good charge rate. Um, but it was pretty clear I wanted a Tesla charger at home. All right, so I ordered this off the Tesla website. This is the, uh, the regular Tesla home charger. There's really no... There's no better way to, to charge a car. There's no better way, no faster way, you know, until you get superchargers at your house. But uh, right now, um, this is the best way to go. So these are like $500 on the Tesla website. And there's a lot of other electrical stuff going on here. That's part of the solar system. So really the only thing here is the, <coughs> the original Tesla charger that I put in. And then over here, I put in a second one. And that's where things got got a little uh, a little weird. I, some information I wish I would have known, but I'll get to that. So when I put the first Tesla charger in, the uh, you can you can wire it up, I think probably to 100 amps or better. Um, but the gist of it is that um, the most that one charger can use practically is 60 amps, I believe. And so we put in a 60 amp breaker uh, and we ran the appropriate wires, probably number six to this uh, charger and so this one's wired up 60 amps well that worked great and awesome it's it's so great to be able to plug in your house at your house and have uh, have a full tank full battery every day the problem is when <clears throat> when you buy a Tesla eventually you're probably gonna buy a second Tesla and then maybe another Tesla until all you have is Tesla's or electric vehicles or whatever because they're just so great so that's the problem I ran into is that over the next year or two, I started switching out other vehicles with Teslas because I loved them. And so eventually we had three Teslas sharing one charger. <clears throat> and that's doable. Uh, one charger can keep up with three cars okay. The problem is that um, you kind of got to be smart about it and people have to, to charge when it's available instead of letting three cars run down to zero. <clears throat> also, the other thing was my wife doesn't like backing into the garage. And so she would not charge it a lot of times unless I backed it in. And so it get, became pretty evident that we wanted to add another one. So <clears throat> this is the charger that I added that was, this is my wife's car. So it's more for my wife, but really just so we could have two chargers for any of the cars here. And, um, <clears throat> and so this is great for her because she can pull straight in plug it in it's right there and it's really great for everybody because now we have both corners of the garage covered and we can charge from any angle but here's the kicker uh so 60 amps is is quite a bit of power in fact most homes like a newer home like uh, mine has 200 amp service that's pretty standard an older home might have 100 amps and so 60 amps is a pretty good chunk of that power so then when you add another one, then you're at 120 amps of uh, potentially 200 amp service. And so if you're charging both cars and, you know, running the elect, you know, uh, air conditioning and cooking and all that, uh, it's doable, but you could get pretty tight with your electricity. Um, and then if you ever want to add a third one, <laughs> just forget about it. Um, it's not going to happen on 200 amp service. But 
the guys at, uh, the really smart guys at Tesla figured this out. And so they figured out that you can, so they plan for that and you can have four chargers, four Tesla chargers wired in tandem to each other. Um, but then you want a hundred amp or that's the maximum. So, um, it's a really cool system. You wire up one as a master and then any subsequent charger as a slave. And so they talk to each other and they figure out who needs the power more. And so that was the big mistake or the big thing that I didn't know is that I should have ran a hundred amp service to the first Tesla charger, even though one charger can really only use 60. Uh, because then when you expand the system, then you can utilize that whole hundred amp. So what I had to do is go back and uh, I had to go back and rewire it. And it wasn't a huge deal, but it's just one of those things I wish I would have known. All right, so when I, fir when I first wired up this one, I just had a single conduit coming in and, uh, and, and going straight to this uh, charger. So when I added a second one, uh, we added this box. And I don't know if you can kind of get in here and see, but so there's terminals here. So the, here's the wiring coming in and then we've got blocks that, so it comes in and then it splits off and goes uh, to the other charger. And so <clears throat> then also there's a communication wire and that's this gray wire. The big, you know, the big wires are the power, but then it, it also has to have a communication wire and that wire runs between the two units and, that, and that's how they talk to each other and figures out which, which unit needs more power, et cetera. If you guys have followed some of my other videos, uh, particularly the ones where I'm building something in the shop here, uh, sometimes there's a Model 3 parked right there. And uh, so that's the NEMA 1450 outlet that I wired up. That was actually the first uh, Tesla charger I had. All right. And so that is a NEMA 154. This is the, uh, that's the regular Tesla plug that comes with any Tesla. And so this is the, the standard if you didn't have a home charger you'd have to use this plug and then um and then it goes to this box and there's a bunch of different adapters that you can plug into that box so this one happens to be the uh 1540 so that's a regular like a 50 amp rv plug so that's the nice thing about tesla's is um if there's a place that has power one way or another you can uh, if you have the right adapter, you can plug into almost anything. So, All right, so that's my video on Tesla chargers. Um, I hope that video is beneficial to somebody out there. I know it would have been beneficial to me. Uh, so, yeah, like, hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.